Oh, he loves some of it, where you know, tragically awful things happen to Roman Catholic nuns. You, you can hear Newton saying, good, the Antichrist is suffering. And I, I think we, we have to remember, for somebody like Newton, Roman Catholics aren't really human. You know, they're, they're compromised by the Antichrist. It's the same sort of argument that allows Cromwell to slaughter tens of thousands of Roman Catholic peasants. They're not really human. Newton studied biblical texts obsessively. He had 30 Bibles in many languages, including Arabic and Hebrew. The books of prophecy, Daniel and Revelation, were his favorite texts, although they were often dismissed for their violent symbolism. Newton felt these contained, in code, the words of God and a description of past and future events. From his reading of Revelation, Newton became convinced God foresaw that the Catholics would corrupt pure Christianity. I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. This is a very uh, powerful imagery. Newton associated uh, the Catholic Church with a form of fornication. This was spiritual fornication, because if one imagines the pure church as a chaste virgin, then it makes sense to think in terms of the Catholic Church, the Trinitarian Church, as a harlot who had committed fornication with corrupt non-biblical teachings. And uh, it reveals uh, a passionate hatred Just as Newton looked into the books of prophecy to see God's plans unfolding, so he looked into his alchemical crucible to find God's laws of the universe. Today, Professor Newman can see what Newton saw 300 years ago. Metals seem to come to life and grow like plants. In a secret, unpublished manuscript on the vegetation of metals, Newton gave an alchemical view of the universe. His manuscript on vegetation begins with a discussion of metallic trees, and from that he then launches into a long expose of the theory that the earth is alive and that it respires, exhales, inhales. Newton said an almost magical ingredient called sal nitrum made the earth into a living being. He believed sal nitrum continually circulated from the stars to the fiery core of the earth, bringing life to the metals he saw in his flask and feeding plants. This earth resembles a great animal, or rather, inanimate vegetable, draws in ethereal breath for its daily refreshment and vital ferment, and transpires with gross exhalations. Newton even uses this unproven alchemical theory to explain the cause of gravity. It comes down exceedingly rapidly as this very, very fine material that's completely imperceptible to our senses. But, and this is the key thing, this is responsible for bodies falling to the surface of the earth. In other words, it's a mechanism, a mechanical explanation of gravity. 
Today this experiment causes no surprise and certainly doesn't help to explain the mechanical cause of gravity. It's just the reaction of a metal compound in a silicate solution. But Newton's alchemy convinced him the hand of God influenced all things. Even tiny particles seemed to live and grow in his crucible. He mocked scientists like Descartes, who saw an inert, godless world. We're men and beasts made by fortuitous jumblings of atoms. There'd be many parts useless in them. Here a lump of flesh, there a member too much. Some kinds of beasts might have had but one eye, some more than two. Atoms, mechanical laws, and nothing when compared to the knowledge and wisdom of the Creator. In 1675, Isaac Newton emerged from the womb of Trinity. His double life was in danger of being revealed. He could no longer put off the obligation as a professor to become a cleric, but that was against his heretical beliefs. So he set off to London to convince King Charles II to excuse him from taking holy orders. After seeing the King's advisers, Newton attended his first meeting of the Royal Society, the leading scientific body. Newton was just 33, but most members of the Society held him in awe. He was delighted by his reception, and he agreed to send to the Royal Society a revolutionary paper he had written called An Hypothesis Explaining the Properties of Light. Later that year, over four weeks, Newton's work was read to the Royal Society. The author stayed in his laboratory. For nature is a perpetual circulatory worker, generating fluids out of solids and solids out of fluids, fixed things out of volatile and volatile out of fixed, subtle out of gross and gross out of subtle. Some the eminent members of the Royal Society must have been puzzled by the alchemical language that mirrored Newton's secret manuscript on the vegetation of metals. Very thinly and subtly diffused through it. Perhaps uh, of an unctuous or gummy, tenacious and springy nature. Newton's hidden alchemy seemed to be giving new insights into science and also into God's way. And Newton was elated. He'd heard the news he'd been waiting for. King Charles II had exempted him from taking holy orders without knowing he was excusing a heretic. For the moment, Newton was safe. But he would be tormented for the rest of his life should he stay silent or denounce the corruption of the Anglican Church publicly. If the Trinity is still here, so is the Antichrist. It's not something you can just sort of shrug off and say, oh, I'll deal with that tomorrow. It's not something that goes away when you go to sleep. It's going to haunt your dream. Newton could reassure himself that he was doing God's will. His grand project was to understand all God's secrets of the creation, of the forces that held the universe together, and of God's plans for the second coming of Christ and the return to pure Christianity. As an adept, Newton believed that he was chosen to decode the secrets locked in the work of the ancients. He was rediscovering what a select few who had been chosen by God to share these secrets had done in the past. And he ultimately becomes convinced that he is in fact special. He has the special confidence of God. Newton thought ancient temples also held secrets only 